was good you too we're back again for another lovely episode here at the h-town run down today i'm actually joined by the usual co-hosts my boy dante my boy george guys how have you been and what's up what's good man all is well um been super excited super ready for uh the off season to see what's 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 ahead for us to tackle man but uh but yeah man super excited nothing to really complain about not for real for real you know <laughs> we'll be excited we got a new head coach in town very excited about coach Ime Udoka and ready to sight for a new era of Houston Rockets basketball phase two is in effect guys i can't wait so let's jump right into it so <laughs> we're gonna talk about uh some more of the houston rockets season grades uh from our players still uh for this week's episode and then we're gonna talk about some of the playoff news i know you guys been waiting on that especially the crazy game that just happened as well as the adoka presser that we are just waiting to get right into it's gonna be juicy today so let's jump right into it right into it here we're gonna start with bruno fernando for our uh grades today bruno was not <laughs> was not a great guy for us this season as you know uh, originally our team wanted to start him off as the starter over Alperen Shangun which the mic went out AD take that out we're gonna take it back from the top ready as you guys know we got Bruno starting off here Bruno Fernando was not the greatest guy for the Houston Rockets this season here uh, as you guys know, he was supposed to start over at Alperin Shangun. I know you guys know that was not the move for us, <laughs> as we saw after we traded him. Uh, he started, or he played uh, 31 games for us total and started four. That did not last very long before they moved Alperin Shangun to go into the lineup. But that only happened because Bruno got hurt. Guys, let me know what you think about this before I move on to my actual grade. But Bruno Fernando. Why did he start? Yeah, I mean, I think the intentions were there. Um, were, were probably like straight, uh, the, being that they wanted to get some rim runners and attack the rim. Um, things I've heard, you know, from other people is a uh, live threat and stuff like that. The jokes they make about them, and who in reference to like it being like a cadence for um, Kevin Porter or whatever. But nonetheless, though, like athletically. I liked him size wise. I didn't, and then like mainly his success, like really, it was depending on how slippery his hands were game in game out. Like some games he would come in and it'd be like, okay, you know, he got got that random seven assist game or whatever. And then most games, he like he couldn't even like hold on to a rebound. It's like his nerves were getting to him. So for me, I just don't really like um, his product on the court um, as it all uh, be. But nonetheless, though, I do. I do think the intentions and the idea of like, you know, having an athletic prowess center, like I, I like guys like Isaiah Stewart. So that's why I like mm. guys like Bruno. But uh, when it paid, when like this guy just wasn't it for me. So um, I would give this an F, you know, D minus for me personally, um, sure for like where they were going with it, uh, mainly because of his part, not because of the intent, but also like I would throw in like, you know, the, the minus part is probably from the fact that, um, they rewarded him for like small, you know, off season. Um, what's it called? Like the training camp efforts over Shingun, and like I'm sure, like he wasn't dominating Shingun. I don't know. I don't have any and preseason, right? Right. Well, training camp too is where he like kind of like earned it because mm -hmm. Shingun wasn't he wasn't back or he was just getting back at that time. So yeah, I think they saw something in him. They gave him that contract, and then they took a risk on him. And then like yeah, like they they I thought he would be more. Um, influential to the game or helpful to the game than she can go on. And I think that's like, that was a horrible case of no. <laughs> that is. Uh, outside of catching lobs, catching, outside of doing a, running a pick and roll and log, catching lobs and his athleticism, nothing really jumped out to me. Still thought it was a travesty for him starting uh, in game one over St. Goon with the Atlanta Hawks. But outside of that, nothing special. Nothing more I can say about him. Uh, I give him a D. Give him a D minus. Didn't like it. Didn't like his game. Outside of catching a lob and just dunking a ball, dunking a ball home, and there's nothing special. I, I D minus. I think we're all in agreement here between D minus and F. I mean, yeah, I'm rocking with an F as well as of right now. I mean, in 
the games that he did play, like like we said, you know, he had one seven assist game, which is great. Um, but I mean, you know, bro averaged three points a game um, on six shots. Like uh, your center, you know, pick and roll should have been a lot of easier buckets for you. And I understand, you know, because our offense Silas, yada yada yada. But you you know, we took a chance, um, and it is on front office to to kind of give him that confidence that realistically he shouldn't have had to begin with um and then nonetheless to have him start over shangun who somehow made the ringers top 125 players um and jalen green didn't but we'll move on uh bruno f bad game bad game now here's a guy i did like this is a nice pickup for us frank the tank Kaminsky. Now, I know some of y'all got, you know, feeling a little bit different about Frank, but I did like the veteran role that he played. I'm not saying that he was fantastic, but for what he was asked to do in the minimum role that he was asked to provide, I think he did okay. He didn't excel, but he did I. Right. He played 10 games for us, which is nice. He played about six minutes a game, averaged a whole two points per game and two rebounds on 40% from three. This is all right, you know. Um, Again, not too much to take away from from Frank the Tank here, other than he had some cool moments towards the end of the season, some cool uh, blocks uh, against Atlanta early on as well. But I'd say I'm giving him a D. Just I would like to see more of him. Um, I expected a little bit more, and his veteran role, you know, he like I said, he did alright in, but not not enough, not enough. Yeah, I mean, just like. I don't know. Just there was not enough sample size. So for me, it's like a D and Q, honestly. Um, six minutes is not enough for really like I, for me personally, for me to give like an actual grade. But I do have like um, I have a theory, like, you know, once we acquired him, um, like the professionalism and the veteran leadership, um, there was a small uh, increase of like know how uh, from uh, some of our guys and like I don't think that he was good, but I think that he kind of like was able to like communicate what should happen on the floor, at least um, from like a veteran standpoint. Like, hey, you know, I don't know. I, 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 it was just like a small theory. I just feel like there was like a small shift from you know having Eric Gordon, and then when we acquired all those player, players in a trade, and Danny Green didn't want to be here, but he did, and you know he just wanted to finish out the season. Um, I feel like he was a good teammate, and I feel like it was some small things he probably gave pointers on that kind of helped the young guys in that small uh, final stretch of the season. So uh, that's just like a theory of mine. It's like things I like I pick up on, and I give him like you know kudos for that. But as far as like his production or his like contribution to the to the team, like I mean there was so little. Um, even like shooting like forty whatever percent you claim forty one percent or so. Like that's those are like nine factors being they play so little and it's probably some of that's from other teams anyway um so yeah i, I don't know like it, it, he doesn't get a grade for me that's like uh you know he didn't even even turn in his paper for this for, you know what i mean to get a grade so, <laughs> the participation uh, I, I points grade, because i do think frank is like a pretty decent pro um but his career has been like non-existent or not like you know formidable um, most of the time. So I, I don't even like have really much to say bad about Frank. Uh, Frank the Tank was a college star and in this league, he's just not, you know, he's not really like showcasing, but I think he knows how to be a pro's bro. Uh, similar to like what they asked for like Daniel Tice back in the day. And I think that that's where, you know, we can give him his kudos and his props. But as far as the Houston Rockets season this year, yeah, he's a DNQ for me. I don't have a great form. Uh, you know when you uh when you take your uh paper at the desk to the teacher and all your work is not complete, I'm gonna just grade them incomplete. Just not enough. <laughs> just not enough. Just I'm gonna just put incomplete on my paper. Just not enough for me, you know, to uh give them a grade. I mean, I like the vet the veteran role that he did play in the locker room. Nothing more, nothing less. Just a locker room presence. Just a locker room presence. That's all. That's all it. But uh, incomplete. Just not enough. Most definitely. Okay, well, again, we're all in agreement. Here we are. Now let's move on to the actual guy, Usman Garuba. The Us was definitely loose plenty of times this season. It's really nice to see. He played 75 games, started one, which is really nice. Uh, he averaged about 13 minutes a game on three points per game, four rebounds, an assist, and 0.4 blocks per game. So uh, obviously a very limited role yet again. However, his field goal percentage went 
up uh, from last year. He was shooting about 43%. This year, he shot almost 49% uh, on more attempts as well. And he shot 53% from twos, which is down low, but uh, he took less than last season as well. So give or take on that. Um, something I did really like to see that early on in the season, he was 50% from three and ended up finishing the season with 40% from three on less than one attempt per game. But still, it's the effort that was given, and he was taking some of the shots that were open. Uh, there, throughout the season, we did talk about plenty of times where he was hesitating too much on open threes. I think we talked about that a couple pods ago as well on something we want to see him take more advantage of. And then down the stretch here throughout the season, the last three or so games, he was more comfortable shooting threes, making at least one three game, which was nice over the last four games. Um, Usman, you weren't great, but you weren't bad. I would like to see more of you. I'm going to give him a solid C-. minus. Um, I would just would have liked to see more of him. And again, some of that we attribute to the rotations uh, and then playing with so many bigs as it was uh, between Frank, Bruno, Shangun, Tate even off and on, uh, KJ, and Boban. So, you know, we had a huge rotation between big men and Usman did get squeezed quite a few times. But for what it was worth, I thought he did I, so I'm giving him a C-. minus. Understood. Yeah, I mean... Um... It's one of the things where, like, so, like, uh, did he get better from last season? Um, in my opinion, I don't think so. Um, I, uh, and, and, and I'll say there was, like, some increase or there was some hope throughout this year that kind of showcased, like, hey, you know, his three-point shooting is there. He may be a knockdown shooter, then it dropped off. So, for those reasons, I'll match your grade and give him a C minus, uh, probably closer to a D plus, mainly because, like, I can blame – a lot of his contributions on coaching and just not having like the the green light to get in the game and you know contribute the way that he probably wants to but when he was on the court he did bring high effort so that's where the c minus idea come from it's like yeah you know high effort guy you know he's like a wrench on defense you just throw a wrench in people's offense he kind of contributes there but you know we have a hard had a hard time to really like evaluate what his contributions can be on an nba level on this type of uh in this type of league and um that goes for a lot of our guys like a lot of our guys don't really have the um i would just say like the 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 i guess like the takeoff the landing strip whatever it's called um runway there it is the runway to really like showcase <laughs> their, their efforts to showcase their skill set um and um and i and i think that he's one of those guys that like are are, are falling victim to that you know um, in a nutshell, though, um, yeah, I don't think a lot of his like grading or season success is all on him. But when he's on the court, he did not knock down all the shots. Uh, I give him the I give him kudos for the stretch of threes that he did knock down. But um, people are gonna continue to use those like, well, you missed some wide open ones. You 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 know you don't you, you know. Well, his form is like not very pretty too. So that's another thing. So yeah, it's like I can see why people may just like forget about him, but. You know, you know, with the new additions of our head coach and what I think his capabilities are and I think his success also overseas. Well, I mean, I think he'll always be like, you know, a ninth man, right? A tenth man who can come in for different sets and also allow you to, with his versatility, allow you to use him in different ways where he can be a contributor. And then there are games, where, you know, there may be like three, four years down the line where he's an easy plug and play guy who can come in in different sets and help you win. But this season, we didn't get enough um, sample size to really like prove that, that that's what he can be. But we did see enough from him to be like, well, I like him. And he's a fan favorite for sure for people who do like him. So, yeah, C, C minus for sure is what kind of where I stand. Like, and, I, and I like the guy. I like what he did overseas. Um, but I don't like the runway. I don't think that people give him enough, you know, room in the short roll, room on defense to kind of thrive. I mean, people make him play undersized center. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, he's a, uh, you know, if you wanted to throw some really athletic wings out there, Tari, Jabari, him will be great. Depending on who we draft, what we bring in the fridge, he would be great. But we don't see enough uh, just like, you know, different things that we could do defensively to really like mess up the flow of other teams. You know, like, he's a really key piece for like those type of sets. And I just don't, I don't see it. So, yeah, but I like him C minus for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we all three for three. Uh, C minus uh, right here. Um, the dude uh, jump shot. You know, it's times he was hesitating on the jump shot. Uh, wasn't confident. Uh, if you're gonna stay in this last long in the NBA, you're gonna have to be able to at some point uh, develop a jump shot. So tells you he needs to get in the gym and start working. 
But I like the confidence early in the season when he was knocking them down, taking them. Then he stopped being confident. But again, other than that, you know, got some solid defensive upside to him. But uh, third, uh, not enough sample size, like Pastor said, uh, too much. Some of that was Coach Steven Silas not knowing how to uh, not knowing how to coach, not knowing how to coach. Uh, I'm not gonna say knowing how to coach, but not knowing how to be a head coach on this uh, level at this point. But it's like a uh, creativity period. Yeah, basically, basically, definitely agree. Uh, C minus, C minus, just C minus. Wow, look at that. We are three for three right now on people. All right, well, let's move on. Here's someone fun that I know you guys are all going to love. Gary Bird. <laughs> we got to talk about Gary Bird, man. Uh, last season, season before, the legend of the bird was great. A uh, man would come in and splash shots left and right, but I feel like the shine definitely started to wear off this season when it just got to be too much. You just run around and shoot corner shots and off dribble shots and half court shots like he was Steph Curry McFlurry out there and it got it did get started to wear down on me it started to get real annoying I won't even lie uh, this season though he played 45 games for us and averaged 13 minutes a game so we had a solid sample size here uh, he was a 90% free throw shooter I believe that was the highest on the team uh, taking more than or taking at least one attempt per game, which was nice. Uh, he was 34% on the season from three, taking 3.4 attempts a game out of his four total attempts. So bro was literally just coming up and chucking threes per game. Um, he did average five points a game, which was nice. But again, uh, it was the way he was getting those shots off, which really kind of hindered the shine to his ability there. Uh, I'm going to have to give him... I disagree, but I'm gonna give him a D. Uh, D plus, D plus here is was one going with. I I just didn't enjoy the Gary Bird experience about halfway through the season. You know, it was just coming in doing the same thing, expecting the same thing. I'm actually surprised the percentages here are lining up at 34% from three because I feel like he was not shooting, you know, anything higher than that. I felt like he was out there shooting 28% because of how many missed threes he was throwing up. But uh, yeah, I'm going with this D plus. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it, it scares me. Like, um, so this is kind of like how I feel about like just just Sean Tate as well. Um, like our front office, like super overvalued players that are just like thirteenth man, fourteenth man. Like, I remember like even uh, respectfully to the great Sean Livingston um, who played for the Warriors. I don't even feel like they value Sean Livingston as high as we value Garrison Matthews during his like tenure where he was like contributing. Uh, sometimes he would start randomly. Sometimes he would come off the bench. You know what I mean? But Andre Iguodala was the vet that led. You know what I mean? It was just weird stuff. Like, like, so my point I'm making is that more or less, like, I didn't enjoy really any of the experience of Gary Garrison Matthews. Even when he was, like, knocking down threes, it was just like, well, you know, he will help us win one random game and then we'll continue losing. So there wasn't any, like, sustained success. And then I remember, like, even times when we had, like, Armani Brooks. I like I enjoy the fundamental game of Armani Brooks. But, like, both of those guys are just so horrible on defense. And then we gave – this like notion that Garrison Matthews was this defensive guy who could take a charge. <laughs> it's like that's also it was like super like a fallacy in that. And and I just don't I don't believe in him. I mean there are metrics that kind of like showcase that he is, but I'm I'm talking pure vibes and eye tests. So I mean I could pull metrics as well, but this isn't one guy that like I I think he should waste your time on metrics from. Uh, this is the only team in the league that he would get any starting uh, run at. You know what I mean? I got. I don't really. So anyway, no, long story short, uh, Garrison Matthews experienced the F not only because he failed, but how the front office like looked at him and viewed him as some like green light god, I believe, and like some like they just kept him on the floor. He didn't help us win games. He often would help us lose games. It was those minutes that he would come in, which just cost us games at time. It's a, it's amazing to me how well him and Deshaun Nix could like really freak up a game man like it's like so much like plus minus i i just didn't understand it um so yeah it's, it's a complete up for me like no question no like no like no remorse no negotiation um the guy like literally was a waste of time it took up minutes developmental minutes that you could have been given a that i think were you know way more important to seeing what we have and then, like, yeah, it wasn't like we were playing on winning games or we were winning games, so it was no point of us even starting him. So even then, like, yeah, that even takes back to, like, the, even the Bruno part. It was like, why were these guys even starting? These guys weren't even a part of the future plans. And if they were, I have real concerns about you. And, and I mean, like, now, you know, now that you have me doing this exercise, it makes me really wary about um, 
the front office and his intentions, man. Like seriously, like this is it's, it's crazy. That's how bad this grade was, and this guy was for this team, and the, how low these grades have been that we're passing out for these guys. Maybe even be indicative of how bad the Rockets are or were. So thank God we have a good coach now. But man, there's so much improvement needs to be made across the board. Jesus Christ, Garrison is giving me like heartburn. <laughs> like, yeah, PTSD like, over there. Yeah. PTSD in a way. Yeah. Like, it's, this is crazy. Like, I, I really truly did not enjoy any of the experience of Garrison Matthews. F, F minus if possible. Oh, my. Yeah, man, you stole my goddamn uh, grade. I was going to give him an F minus as well. Uh, definitely. Uh, I don't know why we're even talking about Garrison Matthews or Dacian Knicks on this podcast. I just really don't know. <laughs> they're one, they're, a little too much Dacian Knicks. <laughs> guys are coming in and just fucking over a game and throwing a game away immediately as soon as they get in the game. Uh, shoot us up out the game immediately. Immediately he comes in, he has a green light, especially coming off those screens, thinking he's Steph Curry, just coming off screen, just shooting up any type of jump shot he wants. Uh, a lot of, Every now and then he'll just draw a charge, just be in the right place at the right time, even if it's a steal or drawing a charge. I don't, just don't know why we're talking about him. But at the end of the day, I'm giving them uh, like Pastor said, elf minus. I just don't know why we're talking. Him and Jason is just very good, very good at just throwing away a game when as soon as they come in the game, and the opposing team just eyes just light up and just they just run away with the game when these two guys are in the game. So just just give them an elf minus. Oh my gosh, y'all are killing and, me! Yeah, and, and, to, and if you want, I can make it easy for you. Like I I, I like Darius Days, I like Trevor Hudgens. Those are really good guys. I think if I'm going to grade them off of their G League experience, I think I give them a C for all like the complete work, just including their G League experience. I think Trevor Hudgens just like didn't really bring enough to the NBA level, and I think he's too short to contribute on those levels. But I Darius Days is a no go. I mean, like I give yeah. him a C for the, the, the G League. Trevor, Trevor Hudges, I give him a C because he performed in the G League and he kind of translated it to the um to the to the pros. But other than that, like I, I have no remorse for these guys. These guys <laughs> right here, like non-factors in like how this season went legitimately. In fact, I think a lot of their burn came what the last quarter of the season, right? Um, they guys. played a total yeah. of nine games together together combined. Right. So, but those were like yes. the, after the all-star. The last three, four right? or five games. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, these yeah. guys were um guys that like you you know when like Darius days came up um and this is like what happened to Gary Bird let me get, explain this for people who do not know so like when Gary Bird came in he was a high effort guy and he made amazing threes right and so Darius days came in and for a small stint he came in and he missed his threes but he was super high effort and he was like well that form looks good and that's how like down bad we were as an NBA team was that we like to certain people forms other in the way that they miss compared to other people when they miss. Uh, Darius Days has a nice form, high effort, six seven, prototypical wing. Just what didn't have it um, to really kind of perform, or there just wasn't enough time to even like figure it out or see. And there isn't enough time for, for us to figure out and see if Darius Days is a good guy. I think that's for a winning, already contesting team. Guys like Milwaukee Bucks would benefit greatly from having a guy like Garrison Matthews and Darius Days, not the Rockets though. Um, Trevor Hudgens, great three guy, loved them. Um, was a knockdown shooter when he was on the floor. But other than that, there's nothing else he contributes. There were some small passes here and there as a playmaker that I thought they were, like, fantastic from him. But nonetheless, though, like, there's nothing that he provides other than a spark plug as a 15th man in the NBA. And I, think does, I, think, I don't think that he projects out even further. He's not Isaiah Thomas. You know what I mean? Like, he's not those type of factors. So I just – just for explanation purposes, the C is coming from what they did in the G League, and their skill sets doesn't translate to any type of trajectory – any three of these guys don't translate any type of trajectory that like fits the future of the Houston Rockets. So I have like no love for these guys. No, love, to be honest with you, <laughs> no love. Yo, yo, not too much to talk about. Trevor Hudgens, I believe it's a way for him in the NBA, but just not on this roster. He may be a little bit too short. He may be a little bit too short, but one thing you got on him, he can't right. shoot. He, he can yeah. shoot, and that's how you last in the league if you can do that. But not on this team. I, I just don't think it's the way for him. I not on most teams. Most teams are not going to even give him a, a burn, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, granted, we gave Jay Sean Tate a burn, a 6'4 wing, and we repositioned yeah. him to play all three or four positions. And even then, I can't tell you outside of the Celtics who actually wants Jay Sean Tate on their team. So, Trevor Hudgens, what is he, 5'9? About 5'9. Five five foot. Foot. About 6'0. No, he's not 6'0. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. uh, 
NBA's got listed as six. No, nah, he's not. No, he's not six. Foot, <laughs> yeah, he, I'll, he, he I'll, I'll tell you for a fact. Like, this is not, I'm like he's not six foot, bro. He's not. I, I'm taller than him. He's not six foot. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, that's it for the Houston grades. Uh, this is kind of the poo poo platter. Uh, for this one. Now the next one will be much more exciting, as you know. We just have our stars of the team left and Boban. So I can't wait to get into that one next. But let's get right into it, boys. Yes, I'd say. Let's start with the Ime Udoka presser. I know you guys are just waiting to get at that. Uh, Pastor, you said you had something about it earlier, so break it down for us. Uh, what exactly? We talking about the Ime presser? With... Yeah, the presser. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, uh, the, the main parts, I think there was like a lot of criticism that came out, mainly a reference to, reference to Tillman. Um, but other than that, I really did enjoy like hearing from the guys. Uh, obviously, my guy Kevin Porter showed up. One of one showed up to the presser. That put a smile on my face to hear all the banter surrounding him. Um, I really like. I'll say this uh, without projecting. Let's talk about the presser. I liked that it, he immediately commanded the room in a way where I think that uh, our our GM had didn't really have much to say. Uh, he just kind of stood there. Though it was actually the radio show afterwards, we had heard more from the GM. But the head coach is the one who they asked a lot of questions to and spoke to a lot. I do think that it was the right time to ask him about the Boston situation, and they did that. But man, I think that like there were so many more pressing questions that we could have got from these guys, and and not in a way where like I was disappointed or disjointed, just more or less like I wanted to know more about the plan. Like I wanted to know more about what was the direct influence of what brought you here and what is like the use case of each of the different guys. Like, what do you see? And maybe he just doesn't even have them now. So like maybe it wasn't even like, you know, the time or place to ask him like, hey, how do you plan on using Jalen Green? And what ways do you see like fit right in a way? You know what I mean? Like, how do you do you have any any things negative about his game that you do 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 like or do not like? Right. Um, what do you think you can inf influence the most? You know, stuff like that. Um, there was like a brief comment on Alper Shingoon. Um, There was a brief comment on a couple of brief comments on Kevin Porter, some on Jalen and some on Jabari, uh, a couple on Tari as well. So I really did like, you know, the fact that you knew like the core guys, I mean, it kind of tells you like who the core guys are, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but there were some like some things that like, <laughs> I guess kind of baffled me. And even he, this is why I actually like, which one are you referring to? Because he kind of doubled back on later pressers and talked about, what brought him here and the idea that like our free agency plans and our um, draft plans are actually not what brought him here. At least that's what he kind of switched his, 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 uh, his conversation up on. Apparently he does have real interest in the talent that's here. And that stokes me a lot because I do believe in the talent that's here. There are guys on this roster that I feel like truly will benefit from having a serious coach, right? Facts. Number one, I do think is Kevin. That's the wild card that we'll get to is now double back to uh, either before or after we get your thoughts. But the guys I do think are like dark horses for like understanding how to be a pros pro and really take the next step in their career are Josh Christopher and Usman Garuba. Yes. Those fit yes. his archetype, at least I think. And I think Jay Sean Tate will be my third on that list too, because I think they are very gritty um non-focal players that can be molded into something that like okay i want you to be a spark plug on defense ooze man i want you to be a finisher at the rim and be my version of marcus smart christopher right and then like i think tate is a it's a very um email yudoka s player i don't know if you guys ever watched him play or anything like that but to go back and watch i think there's a lot of similarities in that although i think jay sean tate is a little bit shorter and I don't think that, like, you know, he can shoot or anything. So, and, but I think, like, so if you remember when Tate came into the league for us, um, he really played well off of Kelly Olenek, right? And he would pass the ball more. He would get to the post a lot. He would play make more in general. And there was like, man, he clearly just needs to learn how to shoot. Clearly that. But right now they have him as, like, you know, some a tertiary point guard, you know, wing defender at times, switch defender. So there's a lot of there that can be worked with if you know what you want to do. Um, but for the most part, you know, we'll wait and we'll see what he wants to do with that. The other guys, um, Jalen Green and such, I, I just am very curious as to what he wants to do with that. And, I, and that's what I say. I wish it was just way more questions on our current roster. What? Why does he actually want to be here? What What enticed him to say, like, these young core groups? Um, and maybe he just doesn't know, like I said originally. Uh, besides that, um, I do like – I actually enjoyed the Tillman comments, man. I did. I, I enjoyed yeah. – Hearing him speak, 
Um, a lot of people who are negative about it. My, the main reason I said is because um, we haven't heard from him so long. And someone put, brought that to like my attention. It's like we haven't really heard from Tillman since like, you know, the last time we heard from Tillman. I can't even tell you when, honestly, I forgot. But honestly, though, like I like that he actually came out and kind of like cleared the air on like, hey, this was the plan. We got here based off our own accord. We understood our current situation and we did not want to be in the middle of the pack. So we're going to gamble and try to fight to be in the power 10 to compete for playoff, um, compete for the, in the playoffs every single year. And so we can get to a championship or we're going to, you know, we're going to crash and burn and reset and start it and start again. But the, the plan is to win. Right. So I like that a lot. I like that, you know, um, you know, he's a man that like, I, I like that he flexes a lot. You know, a lot of people didn't call it flex and I thought he was flexing a lot. I think he, he, I think he flexed a lot when he was talking about when, upon hiring e -May, Um he was. he was like saying that, hey, I called the NBA. Uh, they gave us the green light on it, basically. And it's done and said. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and I think that's when the GM didn't even want to speak on it. It's like, well, we won't speak on our investigation. He kind of stepped up. was like, well, look, the NBA kind of green lighted it. So it is what it is, bro. We we did our job. Our diligence, blah, blah, blah. Um, he was flexing a little bit about the facility, the private he jet. Was, he was. Spending. I mean, like, it was a great, like, it's great to know that, like, we have a GM like him. I mean, I'm sorry, an owner like him. And I really rock with that. So that's what I enjoyed the most. But yeah, man, like, I'm just like, I was more than like happy to hear from like Emay about the Boston stuff. But like most of the Boston stuff, like you can read online and like we knew the truth. We knew the facts. Most of them, they like kind of seeped out a lot throughout the like the time that he was missing for the year season or so. So like it was just like, well, all right, let's clear the air. But then they like continue to be more questions about the Boston yeah. thing. So uh, it is what it is. Like. Yeah, kind of like the fact that he, it was, like Pastor said, it was some truth to it. And he kind of held himself accountable, which told you it was something going on mm. between between the trainer, the lady, and him. So he did come out, hold himself accountable. One thing I picked from the uh, presser that it was a good, I think Sarge had asked him the question and he responded, there's no excuses how these guys are very young. I'm going to hold these guys accountable. Yeah, this is not an excuse. Mm, yeah, that's the motto. I, like that. I just like that when he said it's no excuses, uh, and he understands it's gonna uh, youngness is gonna play a part. But then again, we all the basketball team, and it's no excuses. And I believe in Coach Ime Udoka. I believe he's gonna hold those guys accountable. Something that wasn't held in the locker room this year as well. And I think guys are gonna want to come out and play for him. So I just he held himself accountable. He's moved on. He's in a dip. He's in a new regime. He needed a fresh. He wanted a fresh start. Now I think he's gonna come in. I think some free agents definitely will come here and want to come play for him. And this team uh, can be a different team coming into uh, 2020, uh, 2024 of this up and coming season. But I like that he held himself accountable for it. And I like what he said. Hey, there's gonna be no excuses coming here. I'm gonna get the best. These players. I'm gonna bring the best up out of these players. And things are gonna be shaking up. So I like like that's a part that I kind of picked out of the presser. It was a solid presser. And you know, uh Tillman Fatita, you know, flexed on a, a new facility, liked it, it and everything. But I like the direction that we're gonna go in with Coach Ina Udoka. He's gonna be a night, nice, he's gonna be a great head coach for our young players. For this yeah, team. and to add to that as well, I will say, like uh when listening to his like recent pressers uh, with Vanessa. Uh, I, 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 uh, he kind of gave like a timetable as well. Um, well, at least what it took in Boston, uh, it took half a season is what he said to kind of get people to buy in because they had had success or whatever and playing it their own way. Um, I expect there to be bumps in the road, mainly, like I said, mainly because of Kevin, man. Like, uh, they're, they're, they're they, they believe in Kevin the way I believe in Kevin. I do think there's all star potential on the way that Kevin Porter plays basketball. Um, and this was like my big hiccup, uh, if you guys remember a few pods ago, where I was like completely frustrated with Kevin, was mm -hmm. because there was a Lakers game I watched. And I, I mean, I'm just only re saying it for regurgitation purposes for to remind you guys. It's like there was a game against the Lakers where he dominated physically, imposed his will on other guards, and even attacked certain centers in that game in a way where, like, you can tell Kevin knows how to play defense. He chooses not to play defense. And I didn't realize that for a while. And when you talk about what e can do and what he's going to apply, this is going to be a sink or swim situation for a lot of people, bro. Uh, and like I said, specifically Kevin. It, 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 and, man, I would just love to see 
how this plays out for these guys. And so youth is not an excuse. And I like that comedy made. Um, and I don't, and I, and I, and I think that success and, and, and the reaping the, the benefits and how long it would take for us to find, I think it'll come pretty quick. I mean, not that we can beat half a season or that the goal is to beat half a season, but we'll win more games up front than we expect. In my opinion, I think that there'll be some plateaus and stuff and we'll see some, uh, um, some, some, some lows in a way. Uh, I don't think that they get horrible next season. But I do think that like they'll find a way to like slowly get better over time, and then we'll always have like the post All Star success that so for some reason these young guys like to turn up in March. So uh, we'll see what they do next year. But I think we'll win more. I think we'll find more success. We'll be way more competitive, especially without missing guys like Garrison Matthews and stuff like that on this team. So man I, I just like it was super hopeful listening to him super respectful super mature fella calm quiet but intense in a way man i heard some like many I, i've done a lot of research on email man i could like go for days like i heard some things about him yelling at his players getting the face of players challenging his players cussing his players out he's physically imposing in a way so i mean like you know kevin's six four six five can fight email six 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 seven can fight, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like, I, I really like, I mean, this is a joke we were making all over Rockets while she was like, I really would love to be there for the moment that they have to have their intense moment because no one's gonna like, what are you gonna do? You, your whole, the next set of your career really hinges on email, you know? And I think that's yeah. why he showed up to that press, right? The next, you know, chapter of your life depends on how you in a relationship with this man goes and I think that's, I think everybody involved understands, not just Kevin, but Ime and the other players too. Like, you know, and last I'll say about even, even other, uh, other pressers with that, um, Ime had even said, like, he wants to go out and spend time with his players and the players' yep. family throughout the yes. offseason. Yep. And that was like, man, that was crazy to me. And I, I hate that, like, I'm merging two pressers, but, like, I really want you to know, like, we're yeah, the yeah. Pressure guy. And, like, that one presser wasn't enough of what we needed to know about this young, I mean, this, this, this great coach that's, like, coming before us, like, the guy had real intent on understanding who he's dealing with, uh, learning his players, you know, getting involved in their life and building a relationship enough where he can be honest with them in a way. And I think that, like, as a man and the way I work and the way I tackle uh, tasks in my life, those are the type of people I appreciate the most. Like, don't sugarcoat. Don't F with me. Don't lie to me. Let's get the job done. And I th that's like what men, I think, that are who successful thrive in those environments of, hey, we get it done no matter what. You feel me? So yep. with that being the case, like I really saw a lot of that that day. I think that's why Tillman likes him. I met Tillman before in my life as well. Really great combo, funny guy, drinks ice in his wine, weirdo shit. But he's a very intense guy who's no nonsense, direct, straight shooter. And like those are the type of people that like I enjoy. So I would like enjoy like I'm going to enjoy this next 10 year, like regardless of like I don't care who stays, who goes. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to see success. I want to see wins and like that's what I got from this presser, from both pressers that these guys have intent and they know where they want to go. And if you're not a part of that plan, you're not on that train, you're not on that plane, you're not on that boat, fuck you. And that's how I feel. So yeah, I like that a lot. One it's going to be really kinda, sad to see. Go ahead. One more thing I kind of want to bring up uh, a little bit. Um, if you holding Tim Duncan accountable, then that should tell you something about e -May. If you Kawhi get too, yeah. Why, if you holding those type of guys accountable, not taking no crap from them, then that tells you about something. I mean, Jason Tatum holding them guys, Jalen Brown accountable. The team, you know, Marcus Smart, uh, Marcus Smart's a hothead. You know how Marcus Smart is. It was uh, I mean, they was you know 18, how to use. They were eighteen and twenty-one when they had that abysmal loss to the Lando Magic. He called yeah. the team out publicly, publicly through the media. They finished twenty-eight and seven throughout the rest of the season. Yeah. Oh like it yeah. and, and that's the thing like 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 that that's that's something that like i don't i don't encourage a lot of coaches to speak publicly on their players but um i know when like silas tried to do it before you know it didn't really it, i mean no it worked it worked i say it worked for a game or so then it kind of won yeah, yeah. yeah it worked you know <laughs> and, and, and what i'll say is it's a very crude technique used due to like get the like reset the room almost in a way, right? It's like, look, everybody knows now. Dirty laundry out, motherfucker. I ain't protecting nobody. It's like, y'all listen, we hear or not, oh, fuck it. You feel me? And so mm -hmm. whenever he was uh, doing that, I wonder how many how many conversations they had prior to. 
right? Like, hey, look, they not figuring it out or whatever it may be that was said at the conference. Um, but I know that like those are those are crude techniques that like I support, but I yep. wouldn't tell everybody to do it, right? You know what I mean? Like there's some things that have to be blatant. There's some things that you want to say behind closed doors, besides yeah. that, like, you know, it kind of is what it is. And there, there's the right way to do it, you know what I mean? And I think he did it the right way, or at least the way that it worked for them, you know what I mean? And so you just gotta know how to read the room. Nonetheless, yeah, he called him out by name too. He did call him out by name. Jalen Brown right. take him out by name. He called him out by right. name. Right, right. I mean, but those right. were the stars. So holding the stars accountable is it trickles down regardless. So even if it wasn't just them, they everyone got the message. You know what I'm saying? And those were the young guys too. So they were looked upon like, yeah. hey, you have to take the next step. So yeah, like yeah, I I I fuck with that, bro. I, I just can't like I say like I a lot of people were nervous, man. I can't wait for the Kevin <laughs> Porter call out. No, I can't wait for the, yeah. Like, like cause honestly and i want it to happen sooner than later like you know yeah. like i want like you know if y'all gonna beef if y'all gonna get into it let's start this off season you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, <laughs> like if you're not doing what you're supposed to do like let's do this shit now bro like you know what i mean let's get you out of here bro if that's what the case is if not let's rock bro you know what i'm saying because like and, and this is this is and this is the last i say on kevin too like the last i say on really like the whole relationship that you know this is going to be required the transition from him being a proverbial six man that everyone calls him or this all-star that he claims he wants to be right he wants to be this 200 million dollar man he probably never reach it but he will be a guy who can reach all-star level and he will be a, a contributor on a winning team you know a lot of people have critiques on like his game and if it actually can provide winning in the playoffs absolutely it can look at the mm -hmm. right look at uh my guy uh in denver uh jamal murray I think Kevin lies somewhere in between the two of those, being that he has both the catch and shoot and the finishing at the rim and the playmate. I think he has a little bit of, of mixed bag of kind of the both. Um, and we'll figure it out when we get there. My point is, is that if he can be that guy, it really truly depends on his relationship with this guy and how he handles coaching, bro. And if he can be that all-star, it requires him taking a step back, doing some self-actualization and being able to be coachable. All that cute shit showing up to the press conferences and, being, you know, talking on Twitter and Sudoka and Scoop and all that shit. Like, we know, we honestly, everybody know you can ball, bro. That ain't the issue. Can mm -hmm. you win? Can you play the right way for real? Can you give high effort, high defense? Like, that's where, you know, you know, when I, I, my guy Roosh always says, like, if that's the guy that you're leaning on to be like the guy that takes you there, then he, you're literally going to be as far as he can take you versus like, you know, I think Jalen has an untapped ceiling. I think Jabari would be a fantastic guy as a, like a foundational piece. But a lot of times, it seems as if our front office and our our coaching staff and our, not not our coaching staff, but our front office and our ownership views like Kevin as like a centerpiece of our future, right? And if you're gonna rely on him, he has to be stable and constant. You know what I'm saying? And I think they, you know, with this whole dynamic, it's better to get this shit weeded out as soon as possible rather than like it implode three years down the line or some shit like that because you know it may be what it's not so true yeah i mean and you know, like you were saying to your point earlier about marcus smart and email i mean i really feel like if uh they have a great relationship and, by the way marcus smart and email yes yeah exactly exactly you know and perhaps it's not as um roses and flowers as kpj came out to try to be you know right away in that presser um but we'll yeah. see what happens you know what happens behind closed doors stays behind closed doors as long as they can figure it out you know i would love for kpj to end up being you know like one of the foundational pieces for a potential championship run um right. but like you said like i mean this is phase two you know phase one was kind of like that slow gritty like let's get our losses out now i mean this is this is most games we won in three seasons i mean 22 games man like that's that's abysmal when you really think about it yeah you know? yeah it's horrible yeah, yeah. Horrible. so hopefully moving forward you know it, this is like kind of the move it or lose it you know um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see what udoka can really bring to the table um you were talking about how uh udoka is really gonna be able to make use of uh, kpj's talents i'm really excited to see what he's going to do with jabari i can't yeah. you know you know what's crazy about the Jab sorry did you have something to finish there I, I <laughs> no want... no 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 yeah i'm just going on that tangent but go ahead go ahead no 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 seriously like the, the, the jabari thing i actually don't like you know i don't think about it as much like people talk about jabari and Tari a lot i don't think about it as much mainly be, and, I, and I, not in a way where like it's disrespectful or like that i think that like they're non-factors i think that that no matter what coach you brought in those guys are going to find success because I really do think they're like prototypical NBA players who fit yes. any system. So 
Um, Tari, I think he'll continue to be or find a way to be like a knockdown shooter throughout his career. Somewhere he'll land likely between 36 to 38, in my opinion. I don't ever think he'll be like a 40% shooter guy. But I think 36 to 37, 38 will be like his any given year. I think like what we'll find like in, in advanced metrics, he'll be like some clutch time shooter in a way. You know what I mean? Like when in the last eight minutes of a game, five minutes of a game type shit is where like I think you get more like hustle points, plus minus, oh, yeah. and then per, uh, percentage of shooting when those like when it counts moments, right? Um, but like, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then I think Jabari, see like, my thing is like, I actually think Jabari will end up being like this wonderful knockdown shooter eventually. Oh. Uh, 610 Clay Thompson is a real thing. Um, and I think he's the only person that projects out to that. Um, and I think he's like super versatile, super flexible playing that he can go from three through five. Yes. And I think that he gets bigger. And so with, as long as he had like a professional coach who understood, like, uh, do, 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 would you guys agree with me if I said Jabari is better than any forward that Orlando's drafted in the last eight years? Thanks. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can't name yes. one, anyone. The yes. only one people argue with is Paulo because he was drafted Paolo. together, right? And people yeah. like France because he's a playmaker. But I think yeah. that when you project them out, I think that they all three have a great argument. And the only reason you have those arguments is because we haven't had enough time to actually pan out. But I'm talking about, you know, the guys that they brought in. Um, Jesus Christ. I'm losing their names, but uh, My, uh, Jonathan Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those type of guys. Mohammed Bamba. Yeah, Bamba, Mo Bamba. Yeah, those type of guys. Thank you for helping me there. Appreciate that. Guys. <laughs> it's like those they're, they're forgettable in a way. But like, yeah. like their games, but they're just not it. You know what I mean? So yeah, when I think Jabari pans out, you know, a lot better than those, and maybe eight is a little too far. I have to go back and like check it all. But the point I'm making is like I think that as a fundamental prototypical player, um, if he didn't, if Jabari didn't go to this team, I think he would have had a better rookie, better rookie stint, better rookie stint. But because he was on this team with bad coaching, bad spacing, bad philosophy, tanking. Bad vibes. Yeah, bad vibes. He at many times will say that like he would even be like, "Hey, let's run it again. Let's run it again. Let's get it right. Let's get it right." And that's why he found his way. Like he went from being a guy who said, "I'm gonna take a bunch of threes and I'm gonna make it happen myself." To let me finish at the rim, take these mid midi pull ups. Let me, you know, you know, be a playmaker in my own right. You know what I mean? And he kind of got brought it, you know, his own way. So I actually don't worry about those guys as much. It's um, it's guys like uh, like I worry about the use case for Alperin. I'm more worried about KPJ and Jalen. You know what I mean? I'm worried about the draft pick that we bring in because I, I, we don't know who that is. Because those are the guys that, like, although I think Jabari, although I think that Jalen, not sorry, that Tari will be constants, I worry if, if like, okay, we, you know, Jalen has re received accolades on, like, the most 40-point games since then, the most 30-point games since whatever, right, for rookies and second-year, third-year players, right? I need to see what you can do with your uh, athleticism on a defensive side. I want to see you take the next steps in being an all pro player, or are you just a contributor? Are you just a role piece? Are you, you know, um, coach, help me out. When was Harrison Barnes took in the draft? Harrison Barnes was took in, uh, I, I, I don't know. I what believe it was like six or eight or it was something. Like that. Six. It was seven. It was seven. seven. So, so, eight. so, yeah. so that's pretty high for a guy who's just a, you know, contributing piece. And we took, a guy in Jalen at two, right? Two or three, right? And it so two. it so, was uh, two. So uh, at two, and then furthermore, he was a guy that most people think was like that's a reach. So he is a guy who's supposed to be in a seven range, right? You know what I mean? But we believed in him and we we had faith. So my point is, is that if he ends up being a more like a, 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 a huh, I'm gonna give you one. Uh, remember, you know, Warren from from the Pacers. TJ Warren. TJ Warren. Warren. Like TJ yeah. Warren can give you 40, but you know, it's like uh, is, is he this defensive guy? Not really. Yes, sometimes blah blah has the intangibles, whatever. But like I hope I don't wish that for Jalen. And I think that he can be a lot better. And I think that he has a lot of attributes and skill sets that are really transferable and, and transmittable to the NBA as far as NBA guards are said. Uh someone gave the the feed or the idea that like Jalen could be uh, if he could just get it, if he at the very minimum gets into his Devin Booker bag and find confidence in every shot he takes, that's all he would need. If he could be a C minus to C plus defender and an A plus score, then like that would be a guy that you can lean on. Now, granted, this is my only argument against that. 
I think that the best players and our best scores in our history, this is why the James Harden effect didn't work and take us there by himself, even though it was very successful. The best players in history, Michael, Kobe, um, guards, I would say scoring guards, in history, they actually honed in on their defensive side and took, I mean, they took that shit serious, bro. You know what I'm saying? And when people make those comparisons to Kobe and Mike and such, right? Um, I think that you have to keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Like if you want him to project out that far, which is like asinine in a way, is that taking those defensive metrics, what does he do well on defense? And if he can do those on defense and does he show flashes of that on defense? And then ask yourself that, you know? And that's where I think a lot of people who like, like Jalen, don't love him, have bad things to say about him at times. It's like, that's where their like argument really resides. They just don't like regurgitate it or speak on it enough. It's like, hey, he doesn't play defense to the guys you guys compare him to. Like, what is a 40 point game if, you're t if the other team scored 50? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's my point. You know what I mean? And I mean, like, that's 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 just not, you know, indicative of sex. So, yeah, I have more worries about those guys and those ceilings, man. I have real questions on, like, who is our point guard going to be moving forward? You know, what is the ceilings mm -hmm. of Green? What is the role or use case of Jay Sean Tate? Um, the yeah, just the just the unknowns, man. Like I say, Tari Jabbar, their constants. Shingun is a very good player offensively. Um, I think he's very underrated defensively. We'll see that as we get into next season. Oh yeah. Who is this? Who is this draft pick? Who is this guy waiting in the abyss? <laughs> who is this fella, man, that's gonna come in and take us to the promised land, right? The threat to all Hanjos. Who is this guy? Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really crazy to see who we get in the draft and then even in the offseason here. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, now that we have a former Celtics guy, it's potentially likely we might get someone like Grant Williams um, on top of. Yeah, that was a guy and, I like. A lot of people don't like Grant as much as I like I, Grant. I like Grant. I like him. I, like I remember him. when we were talking about Grant Williams earlier on the pod before, I was really against him, um, but I've been watching him throughout the playoffs in that first round series mm -hmm. and some of his highlights towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And I am starting to warm up to him. Um, obviously, the game he played tonight, I was he got played off the court yeah. um obviously he played the sixers so that's you know that's different but grant williams overall is a solid player uh, i'm not a fan of him being a six six power forward but my I thing like is my thing is is that i think you would have to choose between grant williams or cam johnson and i, I would so. take cam johnson over I would, I love, oh yeah i love cam and i think johnson. i take that mainly because of the use case like you know uh i think i've like before have i told you guys like how much i want triple j on this team next to jabari right mm. i've said that to yeah. you guys before yeah. so like those are guys that like you know i would prefer like a six eight to six eleven four that can help at the five off ball you know what i mean yeah i think that's where like the most amount of like success you would see where Jabari would come in and be a good five. Like if you had Triple J and Jabari, Jabari would now be the off ball, you know, help at this point. I think that like, man, we would have such a great defense, man. We just need I, I want that, I want that 6'11, 6'10 God at center, dog. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would love that. That would be so great yeah. for me. Um, but that's just like my my fantasies and all. So but yeah, I I, I do like Grant. I, I'm a big fan of him. I didn't want him a lot before Udoka, I think that now it makes a lot of sense because I think he understands what they already want, what he already wants to do. But I'm open to so much more, man. Like, me and Dante are probably, like, the pivotal yeah. pushes of Brandon Miller. You know what I mean? Like, those are guys that, like, I think I 6'9", bro. You know what I'm saying? A 6'9", wow. 3. Him, Jabari, and, I mean, we don't need a center. You got shit to go in there if you got those guys on the back, on the, on the back side for help. Man, I, I would really enjoy those type of guys. I think that you yeah. would benefit from having a Brandon Miller. And this is where I told someone, I tell y'all a joke. I told someone um, on the uh, playback, I told them, I said, man, we ran a Tangathon. Um, I don't know if you guys plan on running it today, but we could definitely run it. I'm going to always call number three. I want number three, and I'm speaking into existence because I don't want y'all to get a point guard to take from Kevin this spot. Oh. I don't want Wimby. Because I don't believe in Wimby as much as the rest of the world. But I do think Brandon Miller is going to be the dark horse for this draft class. You know, yeah, I said if I can rig the NBA um, NBA lottery, I can rig it. I would rig it to number three. And I would never tell y'all that I rigged it until like five, ten years later. And y'all be like, fuck, no, you didn't. You fucking liar. Da, 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 da. And I swear I would because I want Brandon Miller so bad. And I don't. No. I wouldn't take him one. That's the crazy part. I would not take him one. 
But if I can find a way to be like, oh man, number three, <laughs> I would definitely do it. Interesting. <laughs> but, it's, yeah, it's, um, but that's just like I said, those are the time. I, I mean, like you know, I don't know. There's not many players I can think of that like are ready to go. Like I, I at this point, um, I would be interesting to see interesting to see what we do with Jalen Brown if we could acquire him. He's such a good like finisher, and I think he attacks well. He's he's gotten so much better. I just think that he's reached the ceiling. I don't believe I want a Cam, um, a Cam, uh, uh, no, Mikael Bridges. I don't think I want a Mikael Bridges. Um, not for what I'm willing to give up for him, but I do like him in this game. Um, and I do, I do, I do think that like, um, I don't know, man. Like people have showed me, told me like Brooke Lopez and such. I do like those type of guys. They're just too old though, and I think they may want to go to contender. So yeah, man. Like I, it's just so much that like. You know, we have to fill in and understand what we currently have, and we haven't seen enough of our own, our own guys. So, yeah, man, I just, like, I have so many questions on what you may could do and what his yeah. plans are, and I'm not in a rush to spend his money, and I'm not in a rush to see James Harden on this team. Mm -hmm. I want to see what we have. I want to see, you know, what this outlook is. Um, how does it work together? I want to get through the, uh, the tribulations and stuff, the turmoil and such, and I want to see what we got, man. Like, I like, I like our current status, our current roster. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, ain't KJ Martin's on the free agency list right now? As of right now, I don't know. I think we got one more year of him. I, I thought I saw him on the free agency block. I, I think I'm, he's a uh, restricted free agent. Like we've got a team option on him, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah. Okay. So like we could do that Jay Sean stuff where you can like have a deal in place and kind of resign him fast. But mm -hmm. yeah, we have that team option on him. I think. Okay. I think okay. So if he's a free agent, I, I'll be happy to let him let him walk. I consider letting him go, but. I will. Count. I wouldn't let him walk. I wouldn't. I, I would. I would trade the fuck out of KJ, man. That's no, so I'm, much value there. Was a free agent. I, I did see him on a free agency block, so I didn't know he was a restricted free agent. I didn't yeah. know he was. A, but if he was a regular free agent, I would consider probably letting him, letting him go, letting him go. But other than that, I will campaign all summer for Brandon Miller to come on his team. If we drop yeah. him, if yeah. we drop yeah. him, I will take him two. I will take him at two if we if we get number two. I will. No, 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 no. I couldn't take him at two. No. I, I, I couldn't do it. I yeah, couldn't do it. Mainly I, because like I, there's so much backlash, and if like Brandon Miller fizzles out to be like, I don't know, a scoring version of like of Mikael Bridges, and Mikael Bridges already is a good scorer, but I'm talking about like initial Mikael Bridges when he came to the Suns. If he was a scoring version of that, where he scored more than he played defense, but he was a good defensive player, but then Scoop became like some like uh, Darius Garland type, right? Then like you lose that. Right, you 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 have to draft properly. You know what I mean, as an evaluator, as a GM, um, and even if, like I said, even if that is the way it goes, then like you still, our GM will be on the hot seat for that. I, you have to go the route. I have to think that the best bet is let the universe give you the piece. Right, if we're supposed to have Wimby, take Wimby. Like you know, if you're supposed to have Scoot. Scoot is obviously the second best player in this draft. He would be number one in any other draft that didn't include um, an athletic uh, athletic freak of nature. So Absolutely. yeah, like Scoot would be number one in this draft, and then Brandon Miller, like I said, like if you if if like like you remember um, Michael Porter when he first came out, like I, I think that that's Michael the way you look injury, at him, like, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he had the back injury, yo. Yeah, you know, and if it wasn't for the back injury, I think that people would have looked at him in the light of, of, of Brandon Miller in a way, right? So I, I I don't know, man. Like I don't disagree enough with with that, but I do understand why you say that. But yeah. uh, I just like you have to draft properly, and I think that. Sometimes you have to get your guy. That's what they'll tell you in football. But basketball is so different, man. So different. Yeah. True. Well, uh, before we get too deep into the offseason here, we still have playoff talk. We need to hit home. Right. <laughs> Luckily, we're not in the playoffs. So. Yeah. Still. Unfortunately, we ain't yet again. Um. So, guys, I don't know how you felt. I don't, I don't want to be in the playoffs until Scott Foster leaves. So. <laughs> yep. Yup, he saved the key, the Warriors season in Game Once Seven. Again. I don't know if you guys saw that, um, but of course the Warriors ended up beating the three seeded Kings in a Game Seven where Curry McFlurry dropped fifty and got uh, crowned the greatest point guard of all time. Um, don't know how you guys feel about that, but uh, yeah, Scott Foster was really giving them those fifty fifty calls um, instead of letting some calls go like he was letting on uh, the the Kings side. Um, he was definitely getting them calls for the Golden State Warriors, but. I'm not going to complain about the Warriors on this pod no more. We don't have to face them in the playoffs right now. Uh, unfortunately, LeBron has to face them in the second round. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic matchup. Uh, this is going to be a really good uh, flash of, I don't know, maybe the 16-17 season, uh, but on the west side. <laughs> it's always weird. Like, people, um, just to the point, like, people get scared of Curry in a way on social media. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because like, oh man, he's done it again, you know? But like no one ever identifies like the flaws and like the route. Like they struggled with the team that they were supposed to sweep. Although position to tell you like, oh, they 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 did it again. They they beat oh. the odds, right? Yeah. But like, you know, I would have, man, there's so much things I can say on that that just like are unfair to the people involved. But I'll say this. Um, I've always thought Sabonis was a garbage. I'll be honest with you. I've really, always, man, I kind of like Sabonis. Yeah, yeah I like Sabonis. I've never, I've, I don't. If I ever said on this pod, please pull it back, research it, let me know, and I'll renege it because I don't think I've ever said I like Sabonis. In fact, when they did the Ty Ty Tyrese Halliburton trade, um, I was very upset about it. I think someone told me the reason why they did it was because they could not trade off De'Aaron Fox, which I thought was a mistake. So. Um, I really do like uh, uh, what they were doing, though. But for a team that has the continuity that the Warriors have, the way that they struggled with the Kings, I think that there's a lot to say on that. Um, you know, a 50-point game from Steph is great and all. You know, all the munchers out there, go ahead and munch all as much as you want. Um, but I think that, like, if there's a team that can do it, you know, like, it's so weird. Like, <laughs> they, they they say stuff on ESPN. I listen to people talking passing. They say stuff like, I don't know how the Lakers will match up well with the Warriors. That's what they say, right? Um, and then it's like, well, how does the Warriors, like, what on the Warriors matches well with AD? Literally. Who's like, guarding AD? What, like, what is, what is there? So, like, I just think that, like, the munching for me is, is really, really weird. And, and and honestly, it, it's things like this that make me feel like what people say. Like, man, there's a lot of a lot of entertainment rigging because like it just doesn't make sense a lot. So I don't know. Not to be like a conspiracy nut, but I just like I don't I don't like a lot of what um, the Warriors do. I'm not a fan. I don't call Seth Curry like a top five anything. Um, I think he's benefited a lot from like really good aggressive cheating screens from Draymond. I think he benefited really from a great knockdown shooter and defensive prowess and Clay Thompson. Those are guys I respect more for their actual craft than like the the shooting in in Clay. I'm sorry, in Steph. Uh, Steph, the knockdown shots that he made, that like those are just like oh, I give you the example how I view. This is a really good example of how I view Steph as a player. He's like seasoned Jokic. That's all it is to me <laughs> because Jokic was a very good passer in the season, playmaker in the season stat it up in the season and then afterwards when it comes to like the the, the playoffs other people step up for them, right other people come in and make the actual gritty plays and the, the 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 shit that actually matters in a way and i don't i just don't think that like steph has that in him and then of the last season when it finally came to be last season right is where he actually stepped up and kind of carried his weight a little bit and they kind of like uh engineered it for him to like you know make the right plays and then this yeah. one game, one game, by the way, <laughs> where he scored 50, now he's the GOAT. Now he's the GOAT. Remember, so, best point guard to ever play the game. Called, they called, man, I heard, um, Jesus Christ. Uh, I heard some some reporter was calling him, like, making comparisons to Michael Jordan and the way that he make other stars seem smaller. No, that's Kendrick not the case. Uh, uh, no, no, it wasn't Kendrick. It was the um, – the yeah, Caucasian fellow that has his own TV show that hates the Texans a lot. I can't remember his name. Um, Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, though, um, I, I don't I don't I don't think that he's Michael Jordan. I don't think that he has any type of any type of relativity to Michael Jordan. He doesn't have that like like he only like the shit talking comes when he's up. The showboating comes when he's winning. He doesn't play any defense. He doesn't contribute to the game the way Mike did. And I don't even like Michael Jordan, by the way. Um, like as much as the rest of the world does for sure. But nonetheless, I, I just like think that other players have always always stepped up. Andre Gadala, um, Ke Ke uh, Kevon Mooney this game, Draymond Green most games, and then Clay Thompson a lot has saved them a lot. So and the Colin Cowherd was the guy I was referring to who's caught yeah, just, like true. saying things that make him look like Steph uh Steph Curry was Michael Jordan, uh the second coming of Michael Jordan. Like, no, stop it. Um no. but no, nah, nonetheless, I do I am rooting for the Lakers. Um, since we're on Lakers, I do want to say this before I pass the mic. Uh, there's a lot of people who want my young man for the Lakers to come to the Rockets. Uh, Jesus Christ, I'm slipping my slipping my mind his name. Y'all, huh? Is that Austin Reeves? Yeah, Austin Reeves. I like Austin Reeves a lot. Um, Austin Reeves, really cool guy, great playmaker, facilitator, not a point guard. Please, if you guys sat here for the last two three years and critique kevin porter jr as a point guard 
and why he's not in his natural position. I don't understand why you want to risk the next three seasons and trying out a guy who's never played point guard full time in his life. And I really just think that people love new toy syndrome, right? When we first got Kevin, people were excited. When we got Jalen, people just like, ah, moved on. Got, you know, Jabari, ah, move on, right? And then, you know, you go to what works. I do like Austin Reeves. I would like him on his team. I would like him for 44, 43, 42 million or whatever that he can max out for anyway. The Lakers will match that. But if they did have a chance to come play for us, I think it would be a very good off ball one, two or three that can come in and facilitate and contribute because I think he's a knockdown shooter. I don't think that he's much of a defender. I think he's a C plus defender in my like visual uh, of him, but he may get better. He may become a B minus defender. And then I think as a knockdown shooter, he has it. I think as a facilitator, he has it. He's not a great rebounder. So there's a lot to be like wanted there. And he benefits from playing with like two great LeBron. famers, right? So yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think that like we should be knocking on the 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 the, the floor, knocking on the door for this guy. Like there's a lot to be, you know, sought after. But I do I do want the Lakers to win. I think they have an opportunity to take down um Steph Curry. I like to see Austin Reeves versus Steph Curry. I like to see how that pans out. Maybe that may that may be the money that gets him um a hundred million or whatever one day. <laughs> uh the play that may get some 100 million one day. I don't know. But yeah, man, like I, I'm really rooting for him. I hope the Lakers win. I hope they win it all. I'd love to see LeBron with another ring. That's my playoff thoughts. Uh, I'm not even worried about the rest of the league. Although I do like the Knicks. I do like the Knicks and I don't care for Harden winning championship. I hope he never wins one unless it's in Houston. Uh, that's unfortunate. I disagree with you there openly. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of <laughs> speaking of the Nuggets actually just took the second game for the Suns. So now the Nuggets have a 2-0 lead against the Kevin Durant led Suns. Yeah, Kevin um, Durant's a playoff choker, by, by the way, as well. Uh, I've been saying it for years. The Nets showed you kind of last year. And we got <sighs> swept. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just we have a, I, I, I like KD, though, as a player. But, yeah, he's not he's not that guy. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. But we have three losers on the team. Three losers on that team. And maybe they can rally together and figure it out. Uh, uh, Devin Booker has never done it by himself. DeAndre oh, uh, DeAndre Aiden's is definitely like a non-factor. Uh, yeah. The other loser is, is Kevin Durant and the other loser is Chris Paul. So those three guys, maybe they can come together and just like, you know, hey, I don't want to be this like piss poor loser for the rest of my life. I don't want to be known as a guy who never did it with all this great help. Um, so yeah, man, like I would like to see them like at least make it to the conference finals, right? Like, you know, but they don't have continuity though, right? They don't have like the experience together, they don't know like what works when everything's are like not flowing, right? Yeah. So there's a lot to be uh sought there. But man, like the 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 get see, this is the thing. Were they up like 3 0 against the Timberwolves or what? Oh, the Nuggets, yeah, they were 3 0. Oh, no, no, oh, the Nuggets were okay. I thought it was yeah. uh, Phoenix, got you. No, got you. Phoenix was uh they faced the Clippers. Clippers, yeah, and that well, was that, that was even hard for them. Yeah, see, that series would have been a lot. Yeah, more man, would have been a lot different with Kawhi. If and Paul. Kawhi yeah. was healthy. If Paul George was healthy, the conversation yeah. would be different right now. But that's just me. That's but just... but but a lot of what's wrong, I'll be clear with y'all. A lot of what's wrong with Phoenix is DeAndre Ayton. We have a lot of bad big men. If I was the uh, Phoenix Suns and I was going there next year, I would try to get Mikael back. Or I would trade DeAndre Ayton for my guy. Who? Who's my guy? Jaron Jackson Jr. That's what I would go for. <laughs> That's what I would go for. It's reported that the Mavs actually want to try to get DeAndre Ayton. Luca mm, and I DeAndre Ayton, I don't like that. Get back? Ka- Kyrie? Kyrie? Uh, no, supposedly it's uh, some pieces like Jaden Hardy. Um, uh, who else do they got? Uh, I can't even think because they traded away the whole team for Kyrie and it didn't. They didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know who um, they could have even acquired. Bro. It's supposedly it's like a pick or two and some of their other pieces in Jaden Hardy. Um, they don't have enough. I, I, no, no, first, no, they don't have enough. Second, I don't like. It had like a three team trade. Yeah, I don't and, know, man. That's 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 not something I, I wouldn't entertain it unless they're like salary dumping, you know. So, yeah, yeah. most of that most of that Phoenix is hurting. They don't have no depth at all. They don't have a bench whatsoever. And that starting five, you know, going to have to play a lot of minutes. Kevin Durant, forty four minutes. Devin Booker playing forty five minutes every single night. They don't have a bench whatsoever, and I think that's going to kill them versus the Denver Nuggets at all. They trade away Mikael Bridges uh, and uh, Cam Del- Del- Cam uh, Johnson. 
that was their depth pieces right there. That was their pieces right there to take over. But they don't have a depth depth at all. They don't have bench at all. That's gonna hurt them. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, he they're gonna get tired. They're gonna be tired as long as this series keep going. They're gonna be tired as hell. So they don't even got a bench. <laughs> Looks like Pastor skirted out of here. <laughs> See you, Pastor. Uh, but yeah, no, for real. Um, yeah, the Suns, it's kind of over. Um, not not over. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying they're gonna lose, but like they they got no team chemistry. They haven't been together long enough, and they're facing a the Nuggets team that have been together. Like uh, Michael Porter Jr., Nikola Jokic, and uh, Jamal Murray. They were all drafted by that team. They're all homegrown players. They're all really good. And I mean. MPJ coming in was great. And then the the trade for Aaron Gordon, which I thought was really underrated. Aaron Gordon is having a yeah. career year in terms of points, of uh, efficiency, uh, turnover rate with assists. I mean, yeah. I, and obviously that's, you know, because Jokic is so good, his numbers look a little inflated. But a big piece that they picked up was Bruce Brown, bro. I love, you, bro. I love yes, him. bro. Love the devil, yo. Oh my gosh, Bruce Brown is so good. Uh, I think he's a free agent too. I think he's a free agent too. Free no, agent. no, no, they they picked him up uh, for uh, a two year. Oh, for real? I yeah, yeah. So, I so like he's him. on the team for this year and next year, I believe. Um, right. I don't think he's got an option, but yeah, they've got him for at least two years locked up, uh, including this year. Um, but yeah, a fantastic piece. I yeah. love the Bruce Brown effect. Um, I was kind of thinking that he was actually going to go to the Suns, but he went to the Nuggets, which I thought was a smart move on his part. Um, but yeah, uh, realistically, um, Suns could still come back. I mean, we've seen plenty of down O2s. I mean, the Golden State Warriors literally just did it. Um, never know what can happen in the playoffs. It's the playoffs. Uh, it depends on who the refs are really helping out. Um, but in this case, Nuggets and Suns, man, I mean, they're going back to Phoenix. They've got that rivalry where uh, the year before, not last year, but the year before, you know, it was Suns and four, and they swept the Nuggets completely. Uh, and then the season after, the Nuggets had to face the Golden State Warriors and got creamed by the Warriors, as per usual. Um, <laughs> I, I like Jokic. I like his ability to do kind of everything. He just doesn't. He's really good offensively, but he doesn't give you what a center needs, which is the defensive, uh, like anchor. You know, like when you think defense, you yeah. immediately point to your center on weak side blocks, um, pin blocks, uh, being able to semi get stops on the perimeter, uh, but really be that roaming paint presence. And we saw with the Timberwolves there, Anthony Edwards didn't care that Jokic was down low yeah. bro was trying to yam it on him he was doing layups over him he was taking he was taking it to Nicola's chest I, again love Jokic it's gonna be a tough series uh, I think that the Suns could go home and win two straight it could go either way but that's just I me think go either way but yeah. man the bench I yeah, mean they, yeah they tried everything tonight uh Jock Landell played five minutes no points Vince Matt Biombo Two points. Tory Craig, eleven points, no point. Eleven minutes, no points. Tory Craig, yeah, Tory Craig. He was hot in the uh, Clipper series. He was hot in the Clipper series. Damian Lee, 25, 26 minutes, no points. Uh, Cameron Payne, Cameron Payne, seventeen minutes, two points. He tried. Yeah, ain't nobody being productive, so it's gonna be. I believe Phoenix will get get a couple games. But at the happen, man, this bench is gonna have to be on point, man. This bench is not really good, man. And Denver can go to their bench and actually play people off their bench and be useful. But Phoenix, don't be surprised, man. Don't be surprised if uh uh Jokic, I think Jokic then will take one in Phoenix. I think they will take one in Phoenix because of a lack of bench. And this starting five gonna have to play heavy minutes. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, they're gonna have to play every minute, every minute of the probably of ball of the ball game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they're gonna play hundred minutes yeah. a night. Um yeah. People are going to say what they're going to say. But yep. for me, if Kevin Durant gets swept, not once, but well, twice, twice, hey, hey <laughs> we're going to have some conversations, bro. <laughs> Straight up. I, I, For reference, mm -hmm. James Harden has never been swept in the playoffs. Just want to put yep. that out there. Just want to put that out there. He's never yep. been swept in the playoffs his entire career. And KD about to get hit twice. 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 Yep. <laughs> well, he got Devin Booker, CP Zero rings, DeAndre Ayton. Yep. 
Ah, right. yeah. We we want some we want some conversations if KD gets swept twice. Um, uh, no, no, straight up, <laughs> straight up, straight up. Uh, so as you guys know, the Miami Heat somehow, some way, beat the Bucks to advance to the semifinals. Excuse me, um, four one. No hero, no problem. Jimmy Butler was absolutely fantastic. Averaged almost 35 points per game that series. Crazy. He goes down with an ankle in this Knicks game. Uh, it's 8-5 uh, and five, Miami versus Knicks right now. Uh, Miami's leading. He goes down with an ankle injury. Plays the rest of the game on a hurt ankle. The Knicks do not take advantage of him. He's essentially Butler's playing that PJ Tucker role. He's just sitting in the corner waiting for the ball like this, right? Doesn't get the ball at all. They're not taking advantage of someone who's literally playing on one leg. And the Knicks lose. This is a classic case of Tim being Tim. Thibodeau being Thibodeau. This is kind of what we expect here. He doesn't like to change it up. He's very stubborn. But I could see very well Miami taking this in five. I definitely agree with you. I think it will go. I think it will go longer than five. But if I'm the if I'm the Heat, I will not play Jimmy Butler in game two. I yeah, let him rest. Yeah, I will let him rest. I will let him actually rest. And you know, if you can win game two, if you can win game two, if you're Miami, off the game, it can even be close. You'll feel good about. You'll feel good about that. So let Jimmy. Don't let Jimmy Butler play game two. Even though I figured that he's gonna try everything in his power to play game two. Uh, Cause he he immediately when it, once he shot the free throws he played he played in the game they didn't take advantage of him I think he he yeah. got the ball one time and tried to shoot the three he had no lift on that three point shot the oh, yeah. shot was very short but if I'm the Heat I don't play him in game two if you could try to win it the way Kyle Lowry and Gabe Vincent them played against the my, the New York Knicks you don't Gabe Vincent yo yeah. you don't know the status of Julius Randle you don't know if he could play I don't think he could play. But other than that, you're kind of even with even but without Jimmy Butler. But if you lose game two, the best thing you got is you took home court advantage by winning, giving up out of that with game one. You allowed Jimmy Butler to rest on his ankle and get treatment. Now you're coming back home where you're tough to play it, where you're more tougher to play it. We have a chance to take two more, two more games in this series. And uh possibility see a rematch of Boston going up against Philadelphia, even though Philadelphia does have the upper hand right now. Do the James Harden turn me in? The yeah, ball. baby, let's yep. go! Oh my yep. gosh! Oh yep. my gosh! That that Philly game. Did you watch the Philly game? Yes, yes. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. Like you saw in the chat, I was going crazy that whole game. James Harden with forty five points on thirty shots. He has seven threes and six assists. Fifty percent from three. Seventy one percent. For true shooting percentage. Guys, y'all yeah. want to talk about Curry's 50 ball. That's cool. This is a five-point different, a higher efficiency. But no one said anything yeah. about James Harden. It's quiet. It's all quiet in the Western Front right now. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw earlier, but on one of the morning shows, they were laughing at James Harden. Oh, man, he a choker. He's not going to do nothing. Uh, uh, James Harden, he doesn't do too much in the playoffs. He's going to disappear. The Traveler. Well, guess what, baby? James Harden was here with 45 points and did that against one of the best defenses in the league. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown respectively had 39 points and 23 points. And that wasn't enough to overcome James Harden's three point haymakers. I mean, once when he got that, when uh, they scored, right. Or it was the free throws. It was down one. Yeah. James Harden just trotted up and shot that thing, man. I knew it was going. I didn't even look actually. I did a turnaround for him. I looked away and that bit went in. Oh my gosh. I know I'm glazing right now and I'm sorry guys, but yeah. The Sixers, whoever wins between the Sixers and Celtics is winning the NBA championship. People can say what they want, but whoever wins that series is winning the NBA championship. And that's facts. These are the two best teams in the league as of right now. And yes, playoff Jimmy is a real thing. Absolutely. But you can't stop James Harden. And, and Embiid didn't even play. We didn't even got to that yet. Embiid didn't even play this game. And th the Celtics shot well. This they, yep. they played well. They played great. But James Harden is just too good. He kill he's a Celtic killer. He's been that his whole career. This is the most he's lost to the Celtics. Uh they they uh for reference, uh during the regular season, the Sixers 
and the Celtics play each other four times. Sixers only won one game to the Celtics three this season. And that is the most he's lost to the Celtics consecutively in a single season. Ever. Yeah, that is uh again uh if I'm the if I'm the uh if I'm the Sixers, I, I would do the same thing. Like Jimmy Jimmy Butler Miami. You know he's not healthy. Why not let him not don't let him play game two? You got home court advantage. Know how you got uh, an idea on how to beat the beat the Celtics without Joel Embiid. Yes, the Celtics are gonna come out. They're gonna uh, make these adjustments. But if you can win Game Two and take it to go to Philly 2-0, that would give Joel Embiid probably enough time to regroup going into Game Three, and you will have all the momentum. But this is really big for the. Um, it's really big for the Sixers. And having James Harden getting on fire. And also, DeAnthony Melton had a great game, too. He Tyrese did. Tyrese Maxey was really good. Nah, um, nah, nah, nah. Can we talk about Tyrese Maxey? Can I back ahead, you up real ahead. quick? Go ahead. There were four, three or four straight possessions where bro got the rebound or got the ball from a pass, run through the court, brick, 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 brick. And he just kept coming. Yep. It was going down. They were down seven at one point. And James Harden had to say, okay, guys, everyone get in the backpack here. Tyrese Maxey was selling. I, Guys, I'm sitting at work in my office. And I'm yelling out, Tyrese, why are you selling? You ended the game great because you got that steal. You made up for it. You got that steal, got that breakaway dunk, and you sealed the game after that. You sealed it. Good job. Kudos. Yep. Fantastic. But up until that point, Oh, bro, I was yelling. Yeah, he was I was yelling. He, 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 he was two for nine, but from the overall field, he was actually straight. From the field, yeah. but from the three point line, that was some. He took some horrible threes. He, he was selling. Unexcusable. He was. Took, he took some unexcusable threes. Yeah. Bro thought he was James Harden two point oh. He was yeah, doing, yeah. at one point. He was trying to do the double step or the double dribble between, and then crossed over for the three. And I was yeah. like, bro. This is the playoffs. This ain't regular season. If, you, if you're doing it because James Harden, your mentor in the regular season, cool. I get it. It's regular season. It's regular season game. Fine. This is the playoffs, baby. That is not cool. Doc Rivers is going to talk to you tonight. He's going to make sure you don't do this shit ever again. <laughs> I was, I, I'm not going to lie, man. There was one play where he had a wide open layup for about a split second. He saw Rob Williams and then turned right out of the paint to do a fader. And that didn't even hit backboard. I was upset. Bro took the most. Ah, but eh, we won. <laughs> Six is one. As you saw. I mean, I'm wearing the victory jersey up here. I mean, you know what it is. I know it's a Houston pod. I know. I know. But James Harden is at heart here. And unlike what Pastor said, where he doesn't want James Harden to win a ring unless it's in Houston. I want James Harden to win his ring so he can come back to Houston and win another ring. That's what I want. But I that game was that was a really good game. I mean, even from both sides. Um, that was. What was interesting to me? Tell me how you feel about this, Dante. Was interesting okay. to me is that Jalen Brown only took ten shots. He was eight for ten from the field through three quarters and didn't shoot the ball a single time in the fourth quarter. Wow, he didn't shoot the ball a single time in the fourth quarter. Not a single time. Like I said, he was eight for ten. He was hot. 23 points going crazy and he didn't touch the ball like he, he was there for you know some passing uh he, he got i think he got a couple hockey assists a couple rebounds yeah. but i don't think he shot the ball one time or if he did he shot it just once but overall how is your second best player your 1b to your 1a shooting the ball just 10 times I don't understand. I don't understand that at all, but I damn sure think it will be an adjustment in game two. But oh, yeah. other than that, if you want to be oh, technical, yeah. if you want to be technical in that Hawk series, you can say Jalen Brown carried them in the Hawk series. Oh, facts. We know, we know Jason Tatum had a big game in game uh, game six, but Jalen Brown was the killer actually in the Hawk series to uh, prevail them. He got hot in that third quarter and in that fourth quarter. He was really good. And it's a, you can make an argument. Hey, Jalen Brown steps up when his team needs him. Yeah, uh, he is a playoff Tatum, performer. Jason Tatum is kind of disappearing low key on a little bit. He's kind of disappearing and not showing up. So you can make an argument. Hey, Jalen Brown showing up, showing up 
in these late stage situations, it's, it's gonna have to be a discussion about that sooner or later. Yeah, we're gonna have to have some talks if you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> now, as for Jalen Brown, uh, we do have email Doga, right? Yeah, I do not want to trade for Jalen Brown because we're gonna have to give up too much in hopes to re sign him. I would rather just try to pick him up next season on the final year of his contract. Hopefully we can talk to him during the off season. Hopefully he doesn't sign that extension. If we do want him, I personally don't want him over some guys like Draymond Green or Cam Johnson and a Grant Williams. If we were to get those three back, but that is just me. Um, but yeah, Jalen Brown is a playoff performer. I'm not saying it's like to the level of playoff Jimmy because playoff Jimmy, yeah. playoff Jimmy go crazy, but Playoff Brown is a real thing, man. You know, Jason Tatum throughout the regular season, fantastic. He's great, but he sure as hell is not no Jalen Brown. Like you said, through that first series, Jalen Brown had to carry the team quite yep. often against the yep. Hawks, bro. The Hawks, bro. Yep. They're not uh, the Hawks. Is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they're literally. They, I saw a stat. Uh, it was like. Halfway through the season, or a little bit halfway through the season, they were like 31 and 31. And they were like literally just like middle of the pack. 15th offense, 15th defense, um, 50% win record, uh, 50% in their conference. Like it, it, they're the most mid team in the playoffs. Like if the Knicks had to face a series of three Hawks teams, the Knicks go into the finals. Yeah, I mean him every yeah. series. Yeah. I don't like the Hawks. I I like Trey Young to a degree, um, and I used to say that. Oh man, the Trey Young Luka Doncic trade was so even. It makes sense, bro. No, I'm retiring that statement. Uh, Trey Young, good. He had one good playoff game throughout six games, and James Harden just dropped 45 and six on 71 percent true shooting. I, yeah. mm mm, nope, nope. I thought no, they were no. gonna be really good. I thought they were gonna uh, be uh, really good, man. When they got Murray, I did too. And they kind of disappointed a little bit, but again, you did get Quinn Snyder, who we always say that's a pretty much should be a better coach than uh, Nate McMillan. But again, Thanks. the same problems you had had with Nate McMillan, you had with uh, Quinn Snyder throughout the end of the regular season when you were losing to the Charlotte Hornets, when you lose when you were losing to teams like the San Antonio Spurs <laughs> late awesome. in the year. And us, us uh, <laughs> here at home, at yeah. home. So other than that, I think it's going to be some things that's going to be shaking up in Atlanta throughout this whole offseason. I think you get rid of John Collins. I think you find a trade party for him. I think he's sick and tired of being there. Anyway, I don't think he's a fit for him. Can I ask um, you something? Go ahead. Go ahead. If we can buy low on John Collins, would you do it? Buy low. So, like, uh-huh. say we'd have to give up, like, a K.J. Martin, a Jay Sean Tate, um, and maybe, like, a protected first-round pick. No. No? I'm like, I'm, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't think he's a fit for this team. Okay. He's someone that needs the ball to be effective. He's someone too much, he's someone that needs the ball. I think yeah. John Collins needs touches, and I don't want him coming over here and complaining about touches, complaining nice. about touches. And you can pretty much sure he made you dope and won't give a cap, won't give it a Rat to yeah. that part. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't want him on the Rockets. I think it would be a waste to have him on because that's going to take away from Al P. And he's someone that needs the ball in his hands to actually be effective. He's not a knockdown shooter, not a knockdown shooter. He's very good using this athleticism. System. He can play above the ground. He can knock down a three every now and then, but he's someone that definitely needs the ball to have, show his true skills. I already look at a Grant Williams or Cam Johnson, who's already been linked to us, uh, linked to us. Uh, I, I see. I had a question earlier that I want to ask you and Pastor about the free agent list. Uh, mm-hmm. Gary Trent Jr. How would you feel if the Rockets go out and get Gary Trent? Gary Trent Jr. I uh, I really like his two way ability. I mean, I, at one point, I think he led the league in steals last season. Mm-hmm. Um, he plays for the Toronto Raptors, correct? Yeah, he's a free agent yeah. this year. Okay, uh, I wouldn't mind going after him, but I know we're gonna have to overpay him to get him. That's the okay. thing. And I don't want to utilize too many resources to get him because I mean, we have so much cap space now. And I would hate to give him like 18 mil a year for two seasons, you know, because um, I think he's an older player. I think he's like 27. Yeah. Um, 
and he's six four, six five. I really like him, but I just I feel like he would ask too much from us. Uh, if we can get if we can get him lower than fifteen mil a year, yes, a absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But those are my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, I think that kind of wraps it up for us now. Uh, Pastor was asking if we were going to end up running a tankathon, and at first I was thinking no, but I'm thinking we should. Dante, are you with me? Should we run let's a tankathon? Do let's, let's do it. it. Let's yeah. Do it. All right, man. Let's do it here. Um, as you guys can see up on the screen here, it does have the NBA days, hours, minutes, and seconds. <laughs> For the NBA draft, and let me tell you, I am a John at the nails, of waiting for that pick. I cannot wait to see what goes on here. Now we are tied. I think we actually get got the tiebreaker officially right, where we are. Yeah, we got the tiebreaker. Yo. Yeah, so yeah. we cannot fall lower than a six pick, which is nice. But knowing Houston, you know, we we could we could knock on wood here. You never know we what happens. So fall as we can fall, fall as five. Five. Okay, five, five. Yeah, that's the okay. farthest we can find. We can't go over six. We can't follow no further than six. Perfect. At least we, I think we're going to end up in the top three. At least the top three. Perfect. So. Yeah, Um. Pastor said three, so in spirit, we're going with three. Uh, let's see what we end up going with. Well, <laughs> look at that. Man, we were landing right at number wow. six. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, who would even be left at six? Uh, they take Wimby scoot brandon miller one of the i'd say probably amen thompson uh for detroit i don't know who detroit's taking at six at five at I six i i wouldn't mind yeah. anthony black at six yeah i would take keontae george from baylor keontae george at six yo mike because at that point i mean it's kind of you know Yep. Yeah. Should we trade the pick? You can you can have considerations. You can have considerations. But it'll be crazy if we end up in the, in number six, man. It'll be crazy. It'll be crazy. Uh, I don't like the bad juju. We just got off this. <laughs> we just I, I tried to end the pod off on good, on some good vibes yeah. here. And of course, no, you know. Uh anyway, uh, <laughs> uh we're gonna end this pod, guys. Thank you guys for joining us so much we always appreciate you coming to come say hi and whatnot <laughs> you can follow us on twitter and instagram at the h town run down for the main channel you can find me at drip god that's two p's underscore g a w d dante let them know where they can find you y'all can follow me on coach dante on youtube y'all can find me at down below that uh the coach dante that rockets uh guy that right on Right on, man. Right on. Yeah, we'll definitely have to come see each other next time. Coming for the yeah. next pod. Coming for the next one. Hopefully, we'll yeah. have another Sixers win, boys. I can't yep. wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but most definitely here, guys. Don't forget to like the show. Most importantly, comment down below what you're most excited for about Ime Udoka joining the Houston Rockets. Uh, tell us about Tillman Fertitta and that presser as well. And uh, tell us your guys' playoff thoughts i'm very excited to see what's going on down there uh don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share us around we always appreciate it i think that's yep. going to be it dante guys thank you for joining us today Peace Bye. Out. Bye.